G'day guys, I um, thought I'd try something a little different today and I uh, just wanted to, I don't know, maybe get you included in something I'm working on. Um, I decided to build a little Necron army, try to get one ready for a tournament coming up next year. And I've already built some of my first models, I just picked these up the other day and I don't know, just wanted to go through this step by step. Um, maybe sort of, I haven't really made my mind up on how I want to paint these things yet, but I think at the very least I could start the modelling process. Um, so, you know, in case you're not familiar, these are Necron Immortals. Let me, let me get the zoom in on that. So, I've um, modelled them up with Tesla whatever, Tesla Carbines I think they're called, um, and one thing I noticed about modelling these things was um, these shoulder plates, when they come together, sort of this front bit here connects to the back piece there, and it produces a seam sort of running down the side here, and it makes a seam in the shoulder plate there. Now, I've tried to correct that with a bit of this uh, liquid green stuff um, and I sort of put it on there and spread it around and let it dry this morning and this afternoon I got this fine sandpaper and just sort of smoothed it out but I think it's covered up a couple of the sections a bit so it's cleaned them up a bit but um, generally it hasn't really filled the gaps in a lot um, and I think for the sake of just getting these guys done, I might just go ahead with the way they are. I think they look pretty cool and should be fairly easy to paint too. So I think the thing I wanted to try next was I'm planning on using some of that um, paint, the technical paint that cracks up on the bases. I don't know what colour I'm going to go yet. I might even do that Mars red sort of colour. Um, but I think just right now I was going to just glue some little bits down you know rocks and stuff like that just to add a bit of texture so yeah we might be able to sort of come along for the ride um, just got some PVA so I've got a big bottle of this out in the garage and I just transfer it to this little one so I can work with it and I don't tend to water it down. Um, I know people do that, but you know, a bit of a CBF. Um, and I use, I've got this old brush. I've had this thing for years, but you, know, you can see sort of on the end there. I don't know if you can sort of make it out, but there's no bristles left on this thing. It's just like a stump. And I just use it for, for basing. Um, I just get a bit of PVA on the end and sort of put some down and, you know, I just use this sort of the end of the brush to push it around a bit. So, you know, there's still a, a use for these old dead brushes. Um, and what I've got here, this is just, I bought a, um, it's like a five kilo bag of uh, landscaping sand. And it comes pretty wet in the packet, so it's kind of useless when it's like that. But I got a, a big oven tray out and some baking paper and covered it in this sand out of the bag and put it in the oven for half an hour and it dried it all out. Um, I've still got, you know, heaps of this stuff left. But um, after it was dried out, I ran it through a sieve, just a normal sort of kitchen sieve. I got this finer sort of sand on top. And I use that for sort of most general basing. Um, and I got this kind of gravel in there too. So... These gravelly bits are good for kind of larger rocks for bases. So, you know, on this guy, um, you know, I'm like guessing this one I'm not going to mess around. I might just chuck some rocks down and that could be enough. So for them, because I want to have this cracked base, um, I don't want to cover the whole base in glue and put rocks and things everywhere. Um, I want to have sort of small patches of rocks sticking up out of the cracked earth so 
I'm just going to repeat that for all of these guys. Okay. So that's all 10 of them based for now. Um, I think what I might do next is probably chuck a little bit of primer on there. Just a light dusting. Um, and I think after that I'll probably spray them silver. Um, what I've got in mind is a lot of dry brushing and washes. So I'm going to keep it pretty simple, but I think it produces a good result on Necrons. So yeah, we'll try that out and um, I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I've um, put a bit of primer on these. I put a bit of black down and then I sprayed it with silver. The, the silver looks more matte than I expected. There's some parts that sort of, like here is matte and here is a bit glossy. Um, maybe that's the way I sprayed or it's quite cold and humid out there where I was, where I was spraying, so maybe that had something to do with it. Um, but the next step I'm doing is putting a bit of shade on there, going with the Norman oil. So, give it a good shake. I found with these bigger tubs especially, the longer you've got them, um, they tend to get a build up of stuff in the bottom. You know, maybe like a residue from other paints or um, could even just be like water blending with the, the mix, affecting the ratio of oils or something in there. Um, but it tends to leave this sort of, um, I don't know how, what, you, what you'd call it, it's kind of like a precipitation of something inside it. And it means that when, when you're getting low in the tub, it can if it's not sort of shaken up regularly, that stuff in the bottom leaves a really dark, um, I guess, result when you're doing your shading. Um, whereas some, like a new tub, is like it fits into the recesses quite well and doesn't leave as dark, like a really dark matte kind of shade. So point of advice would be try to keep your um, keep your washes shaken every now and again just shake them up you probably think I'm using mountains of this stuff and you're right um, I think with that Necron you can probably be a bit more liberal with your use of washes because they're you pretty much cover the whole model. Yeah, you could probably get away with dipping it in there if you were so such inclined. Um, I guess the only real sort of trick to these specific models is when you're um, doing the chest. I don't know if you can see that, but um. These chest bits here, they're like a little rib, rib indents, and um, if you go over the whole thing too quickly, the surface tension in the shade doesn't catch into the base of that little rib, so it forms a bubble, like a little cap over the top of it. So you got to sort of jam it in there by just sort of pushing your brush around a bit into the recess. Once it's in there it wets the base of that indent and then you just slide your brush over the top and it covers, covers it properly. I've already done nine 
of the other models. So I'm just finishing this, this step up now. And I'm kind of just winging this thing now. But I haven't really decided on a colour scheme yet. And I guess whatever colour scheme I end up going with is going to dictate what the entire army looks like. So I've had a bit of a think, but I don't know. Maybe, I was thinking maybe doing a bit of bronze shoulders or something. And repeating that throughout the army in different ways. I'll see how I go with that. That looks like it's about ready. Before I dry brush these, I thought I want to put that um, bronze effect on, or start at least. And I'm going to do that with a base coat, Balthazar Gold, so just going to apply that to the shoulder pads. So what I was thinking is, um, you know, these things are supposed to be made of living metal, so um, they need to look like they they look a little different than just like the Terminator or made of steel or something. So you need a little bit of a uh, pizzazz on top. Well, you don't really, you can do whatever you want, but that's just what I had in mind. So I'm going to do these other ten and um, move on to the next step. That makes ten new models with the shoulders done in uh, Balthazar Gold. What I'm thinking is I'll put a bit of violet wash on the gold and then I'll dry brush the whole model with some sort of silver. I haven't decided if I'm going to use lead belcher. I won't use lead belcher. Maybe iron breaker or storm host silver go really bright. I don't know yet. Um, for the gun, I think I might just put a few washes on that and darken it right down. And I'll sort of figure it out from there. So, I finished putting the violet onto the copper coloured shoulders and they've come up very purple. I was a bit shocked when I saw the first one, but after I've done all ten, I think it's come up okay. There's still a bit more work to be done on it, but um, yeah, I think it's a good start. It reminds me of that aluminium gold alloy that's also purple, you know, like a metallic purple. Yeah. So it's interesting, but um, now I'm just going to do some dry brushing, and I've decided I'll do a dry brush with Iron Breaker on the first layer, and then another lighter dry brush with Storm Host Silver. It's a bit of dry brushing. Um, had a couple of little mistakes in there but it's kind of how the cookie crumbles sometimes so what I wanted to do now was just top up the copper gold color on um, these shoulder pads sort of fill out the main panel areas and see how this turns out it sort of um, leaves a I guess that kind of smithed metal, you know, beaten metal sort of look. Like it's had heat applied to it. Um, I'm going to highlight it a little bit more though. Add some lighter, lighter metallic Psycharax bronze. And get a little bit of that. And I'm going to get a bit of the Balthazar gold. 
I'll just make an intermediary colour. This isn't my normal wet palette. I ran out of sponges, so I've just got this useless thing. Now I think I'll do a final highlight with Stormhouse Silver mixed mixed in with Psycrax. Okay, so I finished with the shoulder pads and yeah they're quite bright sort of reflective and I want to tone that down a bit so I've put together a sort of a mix of the Drucci Violet um, shade and it's sort of like one part shade to three parts water so it's quite thinned down and I just want to sort of cover these shoulder pads um, it's a really sort of faint purple that it adds to it but it also um, dulls that sheen down a bit which um, I do like the, the sheen a bit that's why I've got highlights but um, I don't want it to be so bright that you can't sort of see anything else um, and prior to that I I've sort of done the gun the way I've done this is um, so the initial undercoat was bolt gun metal and I put the uh, wash the null oil wash over that and um, you know after dry brushing I put two more layers of null oil and a layer of agrax earth shade so it's kept me kept the raised edges sort of light but it's darkened the whole thing down and I want it to look like that dark kind of um, strange metal so I've done that for all of them and now I'm just doing these shoulder pads and after that I'll have a think about what I do next all right um, this hasn't fully dried yet but it's not going to affect the next step I want to do um, I've got Seraphim Sepia here and I was thinking of just putting a little bit of that onto some of the joints on the model so it gives the appearance of um, you know, the, the grit of ages that these things are supposed to have acquired alright well um, yeah I finished with those shoulders and I finished with a little bit of the uh, Seraphim sepia on the joints um, I might even do a bit more of that later but um, I don't really know what I want to do with these next I want to do highlights on the weapons and stuff but I don't haven't made my mind up on how so in the meantime I'm just going to paint paint the bases so yeah just going over the um, the rocks on the bases with steel legion drab um, and I'm just covering the sort of flat part of the base with that too so I've never used the uh, these sort of paints like Agrell and Earth the cracking sort of paint so I assume that when I paint that onto the base where it cracks might leave the color that's underneath showing so um, I don't want those cracks to be showing you know, silver um, so I'm putting the Steel Legion Drab down but Steel Legion Drab's a pretty close colour to the Agrellon shade too so I don't want those cracks showing the same colour as what is um, above it so I think after I've put these base coats down I might um, go over it with a layer of Agrax shade so darkens it up a bit just to give it a bit of um, contrast all right so what I've done is yeah put the um, steel legion drab down I put the agrax earth shade on it and I've done a quick dry brush of Xandri dust 
and then a lighter one of Carrick stone over the top and now I'm going to have a shot at using this agrellan earth so here we go I haven't, uh, haven't used one, this one before so all this type of paint so I'm using an old medium brush because I might ruin the brush using it on this stuff I have no idea I'm told you use this stuff straight out of the pot and you put it on pretty thick but not sort of crazy thick so I hope I'm doing this right that's one down um, I don't really know how long these things take to dry so I guess I'll just keep going and see how it turns out I finished putting the um, cracking paint on there the agrellan earth and I left it for a few hours um, and it looks like it's sort of formed these crusty bits which is what I wanted I'm quite happy with that but um, I want it to look a little bit more dusty so I'm going to take a little bit of a gamble um, put a bit of this pigment on top so this is a secret weapons pigments clay brown so maybe maybe that can add a little dust effect so just going to cover some of the feet and the, the ground so I've just finished um, that pigment uh, I actually went with the clay color and the terracotta color mixed because the clay color just kind of blended in and it sort of filled in the cracks a bit and lightened them up so it lost a lot, a lot of the obvious detail so that terracotta mix I don't know if you can sort of see that there but it sort of puts dust all over the feet I reckon that's kind of cool like a bit of a march through the dust so um now I think I was going to work on these power cables for the weapon um, and I've decided to go with a, a purple glow so I was going to base the whole thing purple um, and then highlight up with what was, what was the purple colour? I used Nagaroth Knight then highlighting up with Jean Stiller purple and then final highlight of Emperor's Children so I'll uh, get these base colours on. Okay, so I've sort of jumped the gun a little bit and done a few things. Um, first of all, I, I put a bunch of Agrax Earthshade over the entire base on these things because I felt the um, grill on Earth, even with the pigments and things, was still too light. Um, and especially once the pigments go in, you the colour of the pigment fills in these gaps and it sort of washes out the cracking effect. So went over that with Agrax and it's highlighted the cracks again. I've shaded them in. But I left the um, pigment on the feet so it looks like they're sort of walking along and gathering dust. So, hmm. Um, <clears throat> and... I've uh, highlighted this power cable thing in the middle. Um, I'm about to paint these two smaller cables black, but what I've done here is I've layered up through the through the various purples and pinks until um, I was using about a one to one ratio of white and Emperor's Children to do a tiny little line in the middle, and then. Um, I watered down a lot of druchy violet and just put a thin coat over that just to blend the the highlights on this cable together and I also put some little lines on these vents and put a bit of that druchy violet blend over it so yeah I think the next step is these cables um, and maybe I'll do the little symbol on the chest piece and after that 
I think they'll be done. All right, so I've pretty much finished. Um, I put a bit of black on these little side cables on the larger sort of power cable for the gun and put a bit of retributor armor on the chest there. I don't know if you can see that, but just a tiny bit in there. Um, I've got a little dot of um, the same white uh, and Empress Children mix that I use on the power cable. Put a little dot on each eye with that one just to put it in. Um, maybe when I paint up more of these I might do a squad marking by colouring in this faceplate or something. But for the time being I'm going to leave it, leave it as it is. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with the way they've turned out. I think Necron Immortals are pretty cool. I like the um, almost like uh, electrical burn copper I've got on the shoulders. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to painting up a whole army of these. So, yeah, thanks for watching.